So, um, Eminem, out of nowhere, just tweeted out, uh, try not to overthink this one. He just released an album. Like, like that. No singles, nothing. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Now, Eminem, he's taken up way too much of my childhood. I don't know how to feel about this. I will say it doesn't seem like there's a lot of really cheap pop features on this one, which is cool. It's, uh, it's actually 45 minutes long. That's, that's pretty lengthy. I'm still shocked. I, I would not expect him to do this. This, this definitely doesn't seem like a commercial move. His commercial moves have resulted in terrible albums. Like, Revival is absolute trash. 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 Just straight up. Trash. Let's just jump into this thing. Obviously, the cover is the Shakespeare cover. I don't know if this is an album or a mixtape or what, but like, I'm still kind of shocked. So let's just check it out. I don't see how it can be worse than Revival. Song one, The Ringer. <laughs> Album's called Kamikaze, and as we can see, it's already blowing shit up. So maybe this will be exciting. All right, Eminem. Okay. The bass on here is un unreasonably loud. Okay, that was a good line. So obviously he's making a statement here about the uh, feedback to Revival, which was all extremely negative, and this is basically him saying, oh, now you fucked up. Interesting. He's saying a lot of nothing here. I will say that I like how self-aware he is that his album was total shit. I mean, at least he knows, and he is addressing it in an interesting way. Revival felt so out of touch. He definitely seems like he's addressing this through this song. He, he's definitely picking more relevant things to parody than whatever rock samples he was doing. This is a much stronger statement than anything that was on his last album. And it's definitely not trying to write off of, you know, his older stuff. It's it's definitely a more mature, I guess you could even say old head approach, but it's it's respectable here. What the fuck you gonna do? You run into it. I'm a dumb you wanna take a number two and double you if you ain't doing it. If you ain't doing it, you'll never be an artist and I'm harder on myself than you could ever be regardless when I'll never be as hard It's funny because he's throwing bunches of people like me. Yeah, that song was way better than anything off of Revival, and I like the fact that he's actually like this was kind of what he was doing on that Chloroseptic remix that he came out with, where he was kind of addressing all of this. But it seems like he's taking more of a like a cleaner approach to this, and where he's being way more detailed. I actually kind of like that song. Like it, it, it was pretty solid. I mean, it was well written. Sure, there were a couple whack lines here and there, but it's Eminem, and I've kind of outgrown him at this point. So it's it's definitely interesting to kind of see this different approach that he's going for. And sure, while I disagree with him, he's actually at least being fair here, unlike, you know, with, with everything else that he's done uh, recently. So, yeah. If you're new to this channel, I have a rating scale uh, for albums. And what's funny is I've always used the Eminem album cover for Revival as the shit of uh, music. That's not changing in this video. If, if your song is total shit, you're going to get the Revival cover that's tinted red. It's all right, you're gonna get the shrug, and if it's good, you're gonna get the golden dash. Of course, I can't replicate that in this tiny window, but just just take my word for it. That song is getting the golden dab, you know? I know dabbing is extremely cringe in 2018. Really, everything is cringe in 2018, but that earned it, you know? Because it, it did have a little, a little cringe, but it was simultaneously pretty enjoyable. Good job, Eminem. Next song, Greatest. Hey. Dude, holy! Dude, it's actually flowing like crazy. Oh my god, this is actually amazing. Like, like, it, it, just in comparison, what he's what he's done recently, I definitely approve of this. This hook is uh, out of place.
So you so to me now, Sam. Only problem is, you put out to me now, Sam. Like, he's obviously being an old head here, but it just, it's well done in, in a clever way to where, like, he, I bet even he knows this. Like, there's no way he's saying a lot of this, and he's just kind of completely, like, stuck to it, but it's 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 kind of funny. I, I do like this. I, I think that, you know, even though this album is kind of quick and it's not the most interesting for in terms of production, it's like leagues better than any of the production that was on Revival. And while it's not like, you know, the same crazy ambitious like journey that say like the Marshall Mathers LP and whatnot is, it seems like he's trying to say, hey, look, this is something that is not going to be compared to that. And he's doing a good job at holding his own so far. Even though the hook here is very weird. Yeah, the hook here is kind of shit. Like, it's kind of generic, but it also sounds like, kind of awful. Oh, well, he was about to mention Revival, but, like, the flows, the verses, everything is, like, ten times better than Revival. Which is funny, he's about to mention Revival. The, the hooks, man, it's not... <laughs> like the Kendrick, like, for once he's being relevant. Yeah, the hook sucks. Song in general was pretty enjoyable. I liked the verses. I thought that it was pretty clever. Um, while he is trying to get his anger out, he's still being comedic, but it's not in, in an extremely corny way. So yeah, uh, while, while I can't really give that the golden dab, I can definitely give that a reasonable shrug because in general, yeah, he did a good job with spinning. I just wish he would have chose a, a good... Hook. Even if he was doing that for satire, which is definitely a possibility, it just seems like it was an unnecessary troll. Next song, Lucky You, featuring Joyner Lucas, the man, the myth, the conscious legend. Okay! Okay, hell yeah! How is this an Eminem song? Clever. So I think that this is actually really smart. The the way that this is contrasted, Joyner Lucas is basically he's underground. Um and he's saying like he never won a Grammy, he's but it seems as if he's showing his skill, he's showing like his talent here. And then Eminem comes in to this slow flow saying, I won Grammys, but thing is is he's not putting anything up for risk because he's got so much to lose. It's a good way of addressing this. Like it, it's actually more mature than really anything he's done recently, so I'm I'm impressed. This production is actually good with him. These pianos. Thing is, is he's basically saying everything he said off of relapse here, which is interesting. You know, it's going basically back to the whole pills thing and back to the elevators. Like literally, just every subject that was on relapse is kind of uh, regurgitating here. Definitely going way further here, even for mocking the trap sound and going for it, like he was trying to do that on Revival, but he was also trying to just say, oh, I don't want to go completely, like he was protecting his image in a way. Here he just doesn't care and he's like, all right, I'm going to do this whole trap sound. And he actually does it in a good way. Like he works okay here. Sure, it's not like the greatest thing ever, but that song in general, I like the, the structure of it. I thought it worked pretty well. Jonah Lucas did great. Eminem did pretty good. And there wasn't really a corny hook there. So definitely way better than the last one. I'm happy to see him back on his feet. This this is good. This is really good. That one's getting golden dap. Next uh, skit is uh, Paul. So I think he's already had a skit called Paul. Um, I listened to the new album. Um, are you really going to just reply everybody who it's like, what's next? Kamikaze 2, the album where... You reply to everybody who didn't like the album that you made, replying to everybody that didn't <laughs> like the previous album. Yeah, normal. Yeah. Song's called Normal. I just want you to be normal. Why can't you bitches be normal? The bitch to be it, take the scenic route. She retaliates by trying to leave the house. It sounds like a leftover off of Revival with better production. Normal. Hook is terrible. Normal. And I don't know what's kind of holding me most of the slug. Interesting story. Really not really. Up. Obviously, it's a story about him being in a relationship with a crazy b**** 
bitch, and uh, she's as crazy as he is. However, a song is just not that entertaining. Wrapped in a stuff, peanut, a fajita, slut, treat it just like a drum beat it, complete it, and once you succeed it, repeat it. All under cover, just like most. There we go, see, that's how you do melody. You recognize me and have Milo flip me off right out the passenger side window. Stress white limo, stumble in the side door. Okay, now the beat's picking up. The song generally won me over on the very end just because I like the psychopathic nature and the double standard that he's clearly putting onto this song. While it does start off really weak and it takes a while to get there, it, it's an admirable effort. The second half's way better than the first half. But the first half does help set it up a bit. Um, the story is really boring until it gets to the really overblown, over-the-top thing with Milo, which is quite entertaining. So it's gonna get the shrug. What's nice is this album's got good songs. Revival didn't have a single good song on it. Next one, M Calls Paul. Skit. Paul. Yo, um, playing the reply to everybody who fucking said something fucked up about Milo. Can I just say that I love that, like, he took this fire that obviously was there. Like, as soon as everyone hated Revival, because it had no passion in it, and then he got passion from that, and he just, making a whole album about negative feedback that you got from an album. Who else would think of this? Like, it, it just seems like such a just crazy, insecure idea, but I can't help but just find this to be so admirable. That I literally said I rhymed, rhymes with each other. Sucker free confidence inside, sucker free when I pin rhymes like, I swear to God, this motherfucker lives in Michigan and I think I figured out the trap and I'm on my way to a fucking house right now. Oh my God. <laughs> Like, this album is so entertaining so far. Like, seriously. Like, I think he's really finding his own right now. It's just like the angry old <laughs> stepping stone. Next song. This sounds so dated. Another song with an okay sentiment, but just really awful production and direction. Yeah, this hook is really bad. It's just so out of place. Holy shit. This song is so long. Okay, so the point of this song is basically him saying, like, he used people as stepping stones. And he kind of realized this with the failure of his latest album. Like, the song goes for full circle in a really clever way, and definitely, like, the story was well put together. I just think that the song drags on, and it's not interesting musically, especially since Eminem is so stagnant and his flow doesn't really change. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of emotion when he tells a lot of stories like this, and so it's really easy to slip away. So while, yeah, I think that the story's fine, it's just, for, for the five minutes musically, it's just not interesting. And if he managed to succeed at that, then he'd basically be at the top of his game, but I just don't think he has the right ear at the moment. Especially for a song like this. Next song, Not Alike, featuring Royce the Five Nine, okay. Bring it, I drop. This is an extremely generic cut. This chorus is horrifically mixed. The beat is it's it's scarily generic. If that's the point he's trying to make here, then yeah, he succeeded, but it doesn't make a good song. That was clever with that. Uh, you already know who you are, Kelly. I don't use subliminals. And he's like, uh, that. See, see, there was some interesting things here where he's actually kind of putting himself out there. I've already screwed up, so I got nothing to lose. And he's basically actually taking risks here. That was kind of interesting. Well, it was extremely generic. I mean, and it lasted so. F that song was so draining. It was reasonably entertaining. Gonna give it the shrug. Uh, just wish it did more. Next song is Fall, and it's apparently sampling FAC already. Interesting beat. Holy shit! That's sick! That's 
Another bad hook. So obviously what he's saying here is fac on everyone is him basically saying like you remember that song that was on his greatest hits? That was pretty much one of the worst things ever. I wish I could forget the existence of that song. But he made that song to troll people. And what he's basically saying here is he's going to do it again because he's a kamikaze. He doesn't care anymore. He's got nothing to lose. While every single punchline here is about his dick, it's it's entertaining. It's tough. I I am very mixed on that because it had some great moments, but it also had a lot of things weighing it down. I have to give it the shrug, but in general, I just like the idea that that song was going for. Execution's not amazing, but it definitely is reasonable. Next song, title track, Kamikaze. Everybody's been telling me what they think about me for the last few months. And I'm gonna tell them what I think about them. An actual good vocal performance, okay. This is your title track? Really? <laughs> what, are, what are these bars? He, he knows that it was a flop. And he just kind of keeps playing off of that, like, walk on Watergate. Especially to me, like, a guy who's memed the album for the last couple of months. It's it's pretty funny. Don't make me have to give it back to academics. Say this shit is trash again. I'll have you twisted like Yo, I remember that. The DJ Academics, the, the freaking Joe Budden, saying that it was trash. That was funny. Holy crap. It sounds all right. Uh, see, there's some clever lines here that actually seem relevant. Like, the relevancy, what was totally missing, like, like here he's actually at least being a- Before that piece of shit starts, Kamikaze was alright, fell into the background. But generally, I thought that it sounded sweet. The hook, while it is better, it's still incredibly forgettable. The song being called Kamikaze should have definitely had more edge to it. In general, it's just a shrug. I, I really expected more. Next song, Nice Guy, featuring someone with a really annoying voice. <laughs> Why? Just why? No fucking reply. You say you sleep alone, but get your mattress is king size. Fuck you go and dogs behind the Yeah, this is revival leftover. Here we go, I get in from heroes to villains. Used to Alright, this is part two, good guy. Um nice guy was awful. Like just straight up awful Eminem album cover and moving on. Yeah. Pretty bad. Really bad actually. That song was trash. Maybe it had some sort of context, but just generally, holy crap, those last two songs were unbearable. Uh, now we get the motion picture, I guess this is a bonus track. I guess I'll react. Venom, music from the motion picture, Venom. Another aesthetic nightmare. Another bad hook. Really forgettable song. Sounds like something that would be a replaceable track on Revival. Um, the concept of this album is that his last album sucked. Wow, this album is a vast improvement on basically every level. That's not saying much. It's still 
a really mediocre project with terrible hooks. But Eminem's verses on here are so tight. Like they are packed to the brim with things to pull out. So to say an indefinite sucks is not true. I just think that Why? Why? Why did you do all your own hooks? Plus the whole concept of the album dries clean. The ending is horrendous and out of place. What can I say? This is okay. This is an all right album. Definitely a more admirable effort from him. He's made so much better, but you know, I guess time has just really gotten to him. By the end of this thing, I did feel very bored. I thought that it dragged. Definitely songs were longer than they should have been at points. For what it is, it's all right. This album for me is a five minus minus, but you know, revival shrunk on me severely, if you couldn't tell. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this, yeah. Five minus minus, I could live with that. My name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste in Music. If you like what I do on this channel, make sure to subscribe, hit notifications, hit like, do all that. I'll be sure to see you in the next video. Uh, it's late, I'm gonna go to bed.